Welcome back to Mad Props. Today is a very special episode because I have one of my closest friends, Chandler Williams, coming on. Coach Williams, some people might know him as. He is a coach at Buff State in Buffalo, New York, D3 program. He's going to talk a little bit about the program, talk a little bit about recruiting. Some of the questions I've always had for him, but I've never actually asked him are going to come out in this episode. I've always wanted to ask him a bunch of these questions, but like, I never could because I wanted to save it for when he comes on my podcast. And it's been 65 episodes now, and he's finally coming on. I'm very excited for this. So uh, this is going to be a really good episode. Before we get into all that, make sure you follow Mad Props on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Props Pod or search schnabelstudios.com slash Mad Props. You can find all of our social media, all of our listening links. You can actually listen right there on the website. You can watch it there on the website. Everything's right there. There's articles. I'm going to be adding more things as well, like uh, like profiles of guests and stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on there. That is schnabelstudios.com slash madprops. Also follow Schnabel Studios as well, at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube. And you can see all the different things we're doing. We're sharing a lot of videos that we've done with, uh, with Schnabel Studios recently from different jobs and different uh, freelancing opportunities and stuff like that. So you get to really see what's going on with Schnabel Studios on top of the podcasting stuff. And I started doing photography. It's called Photography Fridays. Last Friday, I shared a bunch of animals like squirrels and birds because it's the first time I really went out. I got a really cool shot of a blue jay. I was really excited about that. But I don't really do photography, so I was really excited about all that. So go, go check that out. Let me know how I did on that as well. Go follow us on social. Hey, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Give us a rating. Give us a like. Give us a share. Give us a comment. Let, you know, let us know how you think about it. Uh, we really appreciate all that stuff. It really helps the podcast out itself. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube Music. We've been getting a lot of plays on YouTube Music, which is like a little shocking to me because we never really, never really got that. But it's probably because Google, Google Podcasts is no longer with us. So definitely do that. New episode of uh, Sketching Up coming out this Wednesday. So definitely be ready for that. I think we're going to talk a little. We don't, we, we don't know what we're going to talk about just yet. Um, but I think we're going to talk a little bit about Invincible because the halfway point is now here. So we got to talk about Invincible and uh, the Spider-Verse thing, which we'll talk a little bit about in this podcast. A uh, bunch of stuff going on there. So definitely check out Sketching Up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us again for another episode of Mad Props. Remember, tomorrow, Slade Ham uh, special on YouTube is coming out. Definitely, definitely, definitely go check that out. I'm telling you right now. Look, he's not even on this time, and I'm telling you, it was that funny. You need to check that out. It was really good. Really enjoyable, so definitely go check that out. I have a couple more shoots coming up, so we might be seeing some um, we might be seeing some throwback episodes in the near future. I'm not sure yet. We do have a couple guests actually lined up for April, so there will be more guests and a couple solo episodes. But there have to there might have to be some uh, there, there may have to be some some throwback episodes. So if you know my history, maybe I'll put a poll out. You can guys can tell me which one you want to hear. Uh, from people that haven't already been out there. We've already done um, H. John Benjamin, Aaron Carter, and Waka Flocka. So, you know, we have Rev Run. We have Jalen Rose. Um, we have the first Monica Abbott, which would be fun to have, like, a throwback Monica Abbott on top of the Monica Abbott that we already have. Uh, Vince Papali, again, first Vince Papali to go on top of the old Vince Papali. There's a lot of them that we can go out there. So maybe I'll put a poll out, let you guys vote. Whichever one wins, that's who we'll do when we do the next throwback episode. And I hope you guys enjoy that. It's really fun for me to do those throwback episodes because I get to release I get to release interviews that I haven't been able to release before. You know, like they've they were either on radio back ten years ago or they were on po- or they were on not podcasts. They were on websites that no longer exist. Um, so I like to be able to get those out there so I can also get those pieces of work out there and people can really see how I grew. Like you go listen to Waka Flocka and you see how I was in that. And then you go listen to like Kid Quill and then you go listen to Slade Ham. You could see like the growth and all of that. Actually speaking of Kid Quill, I'm just doing promotions right now. I'm sorry, but speaking of Kid, nobody paid me for this either. I, I should probably start getting some money for this. Speaking of Kid Quill, he just dropped the song Sierra Mist on Friday. Go check that out. Uh, it's really good. You're really going to like it. It's such a vibe. Go check out Sierra Mist by Kid Quill. He was the first ever guest on the show, so I want to make sure I shout him out on that because it is really good. Um, if I remember, I'll link it below. 
I'll try to remember super hard, but it's not a guest thing, so who knows? But if not, Sierra Mist by Kid Quill. Just look Kid Quill. You'll probably find it because it's going to be right there towards the top because it just came out. I could promote former guests all day, but I'm not going to do that. I want to get into the guests we have right now. Chandler Williams joining us right now. Here we go. Cue the music. This is Mad Props. <laughs> I'm Chandler Williams. Let's start the show. All right, we are here with one of my closest friends, Chandler Williams, Coach Williams, Buff State legend. Coach Williams, how are we doing? How's it going over there? You're repping them on air. I've repped, I've repped them on air before. So I, I know, I've seen. This isn't their um, first appearance. Hey, uh, whatever I could do to make the Bengal uh, na- nationwide, that'd be great. All right. Yeah. Uh, anytime you big, send me some, every time you give me something, I put it on there. No, I, uh, you know who always asks me? Um, you know, I've had tons of gear. Like we've always exchanged gears from like things that have, like places that we've been and, and, and jobs that we've worked. But like everyone always asks me about the Hartford athletics hat everywhere I go, what that, what logo that is. And like, I always tell them like, Oh yeah, my, my buddy sense. works for, you know, the soccer, like soccer team and stuff like that. But that, that hat has given me more recognition than any other hat. Like I've worn a Gonzaga hat out and people ask me like, Oh, why do you have a Gonzaga hat? My, my buddy went there. Like, so it's always like yeah. uh, it's, it's always it's interesting completely different. That. It's a completely different one. You're like, oh, yeah. well, Gonzaga. <laughs> they talk about Gonzaga because they know what that is. What the? F- what is that hat you're wearing? What yeah, is what that? Is, like, the hard for like, What like the hell eight. is that you're wearing on your head? You you, you can't tell if it's letters <laughs> or not. It looks looks like gibberish, but. And I know it's a Harvard Athletic. <laughs> I'm not even a soccer fan. Harvard Athletic. Nah, I am. <laughs> now you have, you have more of those than I do now. I don't even own any of those anymore. Yeah. But yeah, we always exchange gear. I gave you some Schnabel Studios gear, which we're we're revving up some new stuff. So I'll have to send you more when we, we, we do that. We're going to rev up some new things, some new shirts, some new quarter zips. I think I gave you a quarter zip, so I'll get you a shirt. Yeah. And uh, if we do anything else, I'll grab you that as well so we can exchange. Anything mad props some or gear, mad props but, gear. Yeah, so I that's funny because when we I went up to Buffalo recently and when we went out, I had the Mad Props hoodie, and that is the first yeah. piece of Mad Props gear we've ever made. Shout out to Mary for making it because she does all the making of the gear. But that was the first Ma- – I think I wore it on the podcast right after that because I did record a podcast from my hotel about 15 minutes before I left my hotel. <laughs> it was funny because like, I was like, oh, yeah. I got to record it now. When uh when I had taken you back right before we were sitting in my office and we had all the our student athletes in there and we were just sitting there talking we were making that superhero list and the only thing I think about was like yeah. damn this would have been perfect for a podcast if we had time to set up a camera and you would you want to know something funny we <laughs> I stole it I stole it and the next sketching up we did it we did the <laughs> basketball one we did it the way we thought we were going to do it Matt and I did I think I texted you I'm like hey we're stealing your idea if you want to jump on real quick but it was oh like yeah, yeah but 10 minutes before we were recording <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you were like last <laughs> I woke up at like a like 11 30 12 o'clock and I was like damn it <laughs> and, my, and Gabby was like what the yeah, hell happened no, like, yeah. I was like, I, I missed the opportunity to, to, to redraft my guys for uh, for the basketball team yeah. for uh, superheroes. We, we, we totally stole it. And, and, and Kyle couldn't join. So I was like, oh, I'll text Chandler. But it was like, it was. It was like 9 o'clock at night when I texted you. It was not yeah. like, it was like a nice early night. Like, I, yeah. we just we just decided to do, we did that because of March Madness. And I was like, what is a good idea to do for March Madness? And literally, right after I left Buffalo, I texted the group. And I'm like, guys, we should do this. March Madness starts like, the day after we drop. So like we yeah. dropped on a Wednesday in the first game, not, the first four have already happened at that point, but the first game was that next day. So I was like, yeah, let's steal this. And I think I texted you like 10 minutes before we record. I was like, dude, we're recording 10 minutes, but if you're up, <laughs> you can hop on. <laughs> and, it's not uh, stealing. It's yeah, so we totally creative stole borrowing. It. Yeah. Cr- now creative borrowing. Yeah. Creative no, it's, it, I totally stole it. I stole it. Uh, yeah. You don't need to. You don't need no. to preference it. I, stole it. <laughs> I, I, I snatched it and took it with me, and now I own it. I, I actually texted you. You didn't get back to me because you were the one that said you told me about the movie Ricky Stenicky. Did you see it? 
I haven't watched it yet. So okay. I was. Uh, you can skip we that were... one. <laughs> what? No, you I'm watching it. No, I don't one. care. It's probably you can a bad skip that I... one if you want. Of course, it's going to be a bad. No, no, no. I, I think John Cena, funny actor. I, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> I watched it. So there was a day I was fasting. I think I told you I was doing that as well, right? I told you I was going to fast, or maybe I didn't. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I did. I fasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a 24-hour fast. And uh, I was fasting, so I can't exercise or anything, really, because you don't want to burn that protein, then you're going to get hungry, mm. blah, blah, blah. So I was, I was just sitting on the couch watching movies. It's the first time I've done that, and I can't t- I watched. I caught up on Invincible. I watched, like, three movies. I just sat there and watched TV all day. I haven't done that in forever. And I watched Ricky Stenicki, because I remember you talking about it, and I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. And... It's weird because I watched the whole movie. Like I watched it front to end. There was one, at one point I was ready. To, I was like, all right, what's next? But I stuck with it. And then I watched it to the end. The story wasn't like the worst story in the world. It's exactly what you would think it is. Cause they tell you what it is in the beginning. But like, yeah. I just, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. Like I at, didn't, la- like, I, I had one like entire movie. <laughs> Throughout the entire movie, I did not laugh. I, I'm not even kidding you. I didn't laugh at all because it was like, they tried to get you on the humor with like super. So I thought it'd be more like how like those 2000s, 2010s comedies, like where you laugh at moments because like they're relatable moments that are maybe a little over the top and make them funnier. Right. Like that's kind of what made those funny. Like some are super over the top, but most of them are a little over the top or the situations over the top. But the, the thing they get into could be relatable, like that kind of thing. The reaction is, the reaction is relatable. The movie was just super over the top, like sex jokes and shit. And it was just like, I I thought it was going to be a little more of that subtle comedy, I guess. I came in with no expectations. I was like, I'm not going to give it any expectations because I've seen the trailer. And if I come in with expectations, I'm going to hate this movie. (laughs) So I came with no expectations. I just, I I didn't, I just didn't laugh. And I also, based on how they were promoting it throughout, how he had like the, 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 um, OnlyFans page and stuff like that. I was, I thought it was gonna, his character would be a little more different than it was. But then his character was not exactly what I thought was gonna be coming in. So it, I don't know. I just, I'm not even kidding. I'm not saying this because, like, I, I told you, like, I, it sounds funny. I think this is gonna be, this could be good. And I did not laugh. I had one, like, (laughs) moment in the entire thing. That's it. And it's not, I'm not exaggerating. That, yeah, that's pretty dis- yeah, I'm and I like a dumb it. comedy. Yeah, I'm you, still you, gonna watch it. Let me know yeah, if I maybe gonna... maybe it's just me. Like obviously it could just be me, but like it was just every joke they tried to pull was very 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 over the top. It like, almost like reminded me. Forced. Yes, yes, almost 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 like um, the Adam Sandler Andy Samberg vehicle. I what knew was uh, that? Uh, that's my, uh, that's my boy. I, that's my boy. I, that's I my boy. I figured that was going to be the comparison. I thought it was going to be yeah. like, that's my it boy. It was very like, much that kind of boy. comedy. Okay. So, just, yeah, yeah I that's my it. boy. That was I, very forced, very I, over the top. Because yeah, I, I, I'll tell you right now, like, that's my boy was between that and Jack and Jill are probably my two least favorite movies to Adam Sandler. And that's what I kind of got yeah. the vibe from, from watching the Ricky Stenicky trailer. But I, once again, like I'm, I'm a John Cena fan. I think he is funny. I am too as a person. So like I, I want, and I think Zac Efron is actually a really good act- actor. I think he's well, hilarious so. too. I think they're both yeah, great so. actors. And it, it's there's never it's never anything wrong with that, right? Like you can have good, no. good actors don't have great movies. Zac Efron's had a couple of them that weren't great. Yeah. So like, but I still like him as an actor. Um, yeah, it was just a little too over the top for my taste. And there were some good act- there were some good moments in it and stuff though. Just give it you give it a watch and then you let me know. Then you can come back on a different I'll come episode. Back on show. You could tell yeah, me yeah. I'm wrong or you could tell me I was right. But I did and then I watched I I watched the Barbie movie. I watched it. I thought it you was know, amazing. I thought it was you fantastic. Know what's funny? Still haven't seen it. Still haven't seen it. I'm I not gonna it. lie to you. I haven't I haven't seen it because I was like, Why well, I don't want to watch this. Like whatever. It's the Barbie mm. movie. What it was it was great. It was a great movie. I enjoyed it very much. I'm I'm not I mean, granted it's Margot Robbie, so I probably will get a chance to watch it at some point, but I was more interested in actually watching the Oppenheimer movie and that 
was I watched a that one too. Fantastic movie. So like that, that was, was also where, was... like when when the Barbenheimer uh, whole thing was going about. Like I was all in on Oppenheimer. Like big World War Two bumps. Yeah, too. I so watched. That was right there. I watched both of them. They were <laughs> Oppenheimer was like like deserved every award it got. It was yeah. so good. It was so well shot. Christopher Nolan. He's the director of our time, right? Like he's yeah. the one that's gonna. He's the one that's making all the big blockbuster movies of art. He's the Spielberg or the whatever you name name them, right? There's always one. He it's now Nolan, but I, I would I, honestly, it's on Max now, so you could just yeah. if you have a Max account, you could just go watch it. It yeah. was really good. It really oh. was funny. And there's a joke. You say it's Margot Robbie. There's one. So like, she's like she's like becoming. I, I don't really know how to explain this. Great, but she's like becoming like a forgotten toy almost it's like not exactly what it is but like because of her human that plays with her it's like changing who she is as a barbie yeah. and at one point she's like look at me i'm ugly and then the area goes uh if you want to make this point you should not cast margot robbie here <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah that's, that's pretty funny not, not, not the right cast <laughs> <laughs> yeah not the right casting for that but, but it, it was really good i really enjoyed it i think you would enjoy it i think you enjoy it more than you think uh, I, I don't a, think I would solid. not enjoy it. It's uh, I I heard uh, who's the um, who's the guy from Remember the Titans that couldn't cover a soul? What's his name? Um, who plays Ken? Yeah, what's what's his Ryan name? Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Ryan Gosling. Okay, he can play the the crap out of Ken, but he couldn't cover that wide receiver on that on that <laughs> route. That's why they had to get my man Petey in there. But uh, he was he was I heard he was pretty good. So like I. Uh, I, he was. I would watch the whole movie, and I, 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 I'm not gonna have any qualms about. It. I just knew I wasn't gonna go to the theater and go spend that money to go see. That I movie. honestly, I didn't go to the theater to see either of them because I don't really go as. I mean, you I, mean, who, I don't really I mean, go to the theater that much as to, it is. Who goes to movies anymore? No, like, it's yeah. there's no reason to. They're like twenty five dollars. Yeah. They're expensive now. They're really expensive now. Yeah. Twenty five plus dollars. But I, I just can't sit still for that long. I can't yeah. sit still for three and a half hours i no. have to get up i have to move i have to do all this stuff you can't do that in the theater it's frowned upon i know i know but the other thing uh i know the next movie that i will be going to the movie theater to see it on on opening the two movies i will go see on opening deadpool versus wolver uh deadpool and wolverine and then yeah 100%. the uh across the spider verse need to see that you need to see both of those yeah, on I... opening night those are two movies that i don't even care about for the Marvel sake, just for film sake. Yeah. yeah. Did you see they they dropped the short uh, like across the Spider Verse short? So I that, didn't see it yet though. So I that they did it. That was really for the mental health aspect. Like, so Kevin Love was like, mm -hmm. he's a big advocate on. I think he suffered from anxiety or whatever uh, during the M his NBA career. I, I'm pretty sure he's still playing on some team. I just don't know. Kevin Love. Uh, yeah, Kevin Love. What, what did I say? You said Kevin Hart. I said Kevin <laughs> Kevin Love, but yeah. I, Ke for a you, second, I didn't know that's what it was for. Yeah. And when you said Kevin Hart, I was like, yeah, that seems, this seems like something he would do for mental health. And he said NBA career. I'm like, well, he's definitely not talking about <laughs> Kevin Hart. Are, are, you, are you sure? Career. Are you sure Kevin Hart's not hooping? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Kevin Love. He was. He's uh, two-time celebrity MVP. That's a fact. That is a fact. I think the only shouldn't have been. I think the only two-time <laughs> celebrity MVP. Um, but yeah, it might be. It should have been that. Remember, it was the 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 senator or something from Washington. Is the one oh, he scored like twenty five. Oh, he yeah, came he and he gave it to Kevin Hart. He was hooping. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, yeah it's a uh, Kevin Love's uh, adaptation on mental health, uh, using Miles as, as his uh, uh, muse and stuff like that. And it was like really well done. It was awesome. And I was like thinking that I was gonna have maybe some kind of depiction or telling on when the next uh across the spider verse was going to come out but it wasn't it was really just its own thing they'll never was, do that yeah but it was, was an animated film oh it but needs to be done no but it was it was well done it's seven minutes long and it's i i thought it was really interesting yeah i i knew that it came out on the 27th but i haven't seen it yet what is it 29th yeah i haven't seen mm. it yet um, just been busy and I just honestly I forgot I'm not gonna lie I just completely yeah. forgot that it was coming out but I do I did see that it was coming and I think I knew it was Kevin Love as well but I didn't know I, I was like is it that Kevin Love is it like the yeah. basketball player yeah Kevin he's got Love? like a whole foundation based off of it too it's pretty cool he 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 was pretty known as like having like 
really supporting mental health. Even remember early on, remember when he was on the Cavs? There was, that was yeah. a whole thing was his mental health. And people yeah. talked about, like, get on the court and play, get on the court and play. We're talking years ago now at this yeah. point. This isn't like – if this was now, it would be a different story, right? But everyone was like, what is he doing? Get on the court. Like, you're a, pl- you're a basketball player. What are you doing? And now it's completely different. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Like, uh, we talk about it with our athletes all the time um, at Buffalo State. Like, just trying to help our kids. Like, you know, it, it's really – comes down to like it's a huge thing now like being able to balance you know playing football or playing your sport and 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 being all in but then also being able to balance your your personal life your work life your home life everything so you know we try to tell our give our kids different avenues so they can um have different ways of channeling it and then always having that open door policy for our coaches uh that way kids can always come down and talk to us so it's not just always like football and stuff like that so it's like i i'm glad it was a kevin love production and it's like opening up a lot of people's eyes to just more than an athlete is just an athlete like they're an actual person so people who are outside of athletics like they can understand like it anxiety depression like all that stuff like affects everybody so it's not just you know just your everyday person it's just it's an everyday common thing that everyone faces tell us Tell us a little bit about uh, about that. You coach at Buff State. You were coaching at Brockport. Now you're at Buff State. You've been there for a couple of years. Tell us a little bit about your position there and and what you do with uh, with Buff State. So this is uh, it's it's crazy to think like this is now my eighth eighth year into coaching. Um, you know, you talk like I was at Brockport a couple of years ago, right before the world shut down in like 2020. Um, you know, had some great success there, met some great coaches, made some great players, and then came over to Buff State and, like, really been, uh, you know, grinding and, and, and turning the turning the football program around for the past four years. And, you know, I'm the defensive backs coach, the special teams coordinator, the recruiting coordinator, uh, the strength and conditioning coordinator. I, I have a lot of hats there, and I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Um, you know, got a great head coach in uh, Lazarus Morgan, who came over these past two years. Uh, he's kind of been the forefront, and between him and our athletic director, Renee Carlinio, like uh, they have been the forefront of helping this turn this program around. When it comes, to just our overall athletics around. Um, you know, Buff State's like kind of like a hidden gem, uh, being in the city, being being not where you're like walking in between like city lights to 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 go to campus and stuff like that it's its own campus its own entity but like it's just a great environment to be around and then when you see our kids and you see like how focused they are and how driven they are like despite you know the bumps the bruises the bad losses you know um you know it's not an easy road you know playing college football or 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 winning college football games but like our kids are really focused and dedicated to to the process and that's like our whole thing about it like making sure they're really goal oriented and not product oriented like the finished product like chasing the wins chasing the the little things because we know the little things will add up to the big the big things at the end um but letting the guys really know like this is a this is something that we're trying to make for a longevity of time so and I, this is like like i said my fourth year here uh, I love it. Uh, I love the area. I fell in love with with Buffalo. Um, you know, me and you, you know, coming from a small town, Wordsboro, like coming from there, then going to Cortland uh, as a graduate, and then playing there, and then going to Brockport, and then going to Buffalo. Like I finally back into like a big city lifestyle, but like kind of able to do a little bit of everything. So. Um, it's a great area. It's a great school, great campus. Um, it's just exciting. How do you build for longevity at a, a D3 program? No, you, Cause you guys don't have scholarships. You yeah. don't have anything like that. And obviously it's tough with a lot of kids, especially if they're good, they're always D1 hopes, right? So how do yeah. you really push these kids to, to, to go to your school? D, D3 football players are, are a different breed. Uh, you like, you talk about like yeah, like you talk about like scholarships, like when you're coming out of high school, it's D one or bus, D one or bus. Like a lot of kids don't even know like Division three football even exists until you know 
you walk into their school and you tell them like, oh, um, we're Buffalo State, we're, we're this, or we're University of Rockport, or uh, we're University of Cortland, like we're, we're this, that school, like they don't really know anything about Division Three for the most part until like you physically go to the school and like meet these kids. And then when you get these kids on campus, like you realize you get the kids that really love the sport and like they're not doing it for a scholarship, they're doing it for for competition based, they're doing it to excel in their sport and then they're you will get notoriety when you like play at like when you get to, you know, big rivalry games, Liberty League championship games, when you get to play NCAA playoffs and things like that. When you get to those type of landmarks, th those are like when you realize like the kids are like truly, truly bought into the to the atmosphere of Division three sports, um, you know, and that goes across like not even just football, like basketball, baseball, like everything. Like it's a it's a different type of uh, of grit because you're not playing for the notoriety or the uh, the the name on the like a, a like a TV marquee game or anything like that. You're playing for that 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 division championship, you're playing for that conference championship, that playoff game and, and things like that. So it's like really like things where you're not going to, you're going to play your four years and may, some kids may get an opportunity to, you know, to, to get an invite to playing on a professional team or get an invite to play in Europe or, or Canada or whatever, if you're good enough. But uh, a lot of it is just a lot of kids playing for, you know, to, to stay within their sport. And stuff like that so you kind of get a lot of kids that were bought in from from day one you'll get some kids that'll fizzle out after a while and realize like they're not really for the time management of everything but it's a it's 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 a it's a constant battle but it's i i would say like every kid that you come across that has played it's an elite fraternity when you play four years of a college sport so you'll never hear a kid complain about like after their four years, like, man, I wish I never did that. Or I wish I never played like, you know what I mean? So it's always worth it. No, you hear more yeah. of the opposite. Like yeah. I wish I went and played, like I should have played or I should have yeah. continued. A lot of people I believe in that. Yeah. They, they wish they'd have com continued playing and stuff like that. Absolutely. So you have a kid that you're going to recruit without giving it all away. Like what do you, what do you tell this kid to get them to go to buff state? Seeing as you guys are in the rebuilding process, you're four years in, to a rebuilding process, so you may not be seeing as much success as some of the other schools. Like, how do you get these kids? How do you get this kid to buy into you? It's really about. I mean, like our whole recruiting spiel is. Uh, it's it's not even a spiel. It's it's just who we are as people. And um, I think if you, I mean, you know me, and and I mean you you've walked around and 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 met a lot of the staff. Like we're very personable people, and that's how we portray ourselves to our players because that's who we want to we we care more about you as a person more than as an athlete so you can recruit talent you can you can recruit the best player you can get them on campus you can get them to commit you can do all of that if the kid is not bought in if he's not a team player if he's kind of for himself like it's not a kid that you kind of want in the program and it's a, it's a kid that's going to be cancerous to the program or cancerous to the culture so like we we're recruiting more people than we we talk about football players now does that mean we're just recruiting slap a and slap b and no we're recruiting good football players that have good heads on their shoulders good grades good academics they come in and they they spend the whole day like our whole recruiting day it's time consuming yes it's it starts at eight o'clock and sometimes it doesn't end till five six o'clock but it is and we try to make sure that when a kid gets on campus and by the time he leaves, not only do our players know their name, players know their parents' name, players know everything where they came from, they know they have every question answered possibly about the campus, the school, the environment. We want to cover all your all your questions by by the time you leave campus. That way, when you come back and you say, hey, like a lot of the times, like players, like they'll say, hey, coach. You guys were the most personable I, I've ever been. Like, yes, we understand, like, your program's not where you want to be right now. We understand, like, the wins are coming, the wins are there, or, or the, the, the growth is there. But really, like, we understand, like, who you guys are as people 
is why we come to Buff State. So we've, we've been getting a lot of like recruits or families like really just bought into our message and who we are as people, which when we go down the line like five, six years from now, and we're a successful program exactly where we want to be, it's going to be more of a longevity base and not like a flash in the pan. Because that's what like a lot of schools would do. Like the transfer portal is big. It's basically, I mean, at the Division One level, it's damn near free agency with the NIL deals and everything like that. Mm-hmm. With Division Three, it's really just like best opportunity. So like, you can get a kid who's transferring down from D2 to D3, or you can get a kid transferring from D3 to D3 or JUCO to D3 or whatever. But, like, if those kids don't, like I said, have the same mindset as us or same um, same culture mindset when it comes to what we're trying to do and, and be about the team, then it's not a good fit for us. We'd rather recruit the kid coming out of high school and, and groom him for four years and, and – know that like he's going to be the finished product and exactly what we talk about like of what a Buffalo State Bengal is. And what is a Buffalo State Bengal? If you had to give an elevator pitch of what what it is to be a Buffalo State Bengal. Oh man, I wish my man OC was on here. Um <laughs> my uh so like I my man OC uh he played for me uh for 3 years uh, OC Ethan like Jason White like I Man, there's a lot of guys that like who have just graduated. Like, it's it's really a lot of about like determination and grit. Um, you know, hard working when like it's not easy to work hard. Um, it's when 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 you're an 0 and 10 program and you still come in with the same mindset. You still come in, you know, pushing everybody around you. It, it's it's a it's a big process over product mindset all right enjoying the little things enjoying what you do on a day-to-day basis and doing it to the best of your ability and then making sure that you're making people around you do the same thing as well so it's like always bringing people up with you bringing bringing people along with you and making sure that what you're doing is in the right manner of what what our program is about so well, that's why you want to be a Buff State fan. I, I'm one of the top fans. I'm one of the top. I watch almost every single game. I know. I, I, I've been I get, to a game now. I get text messages all the time for, between you, my boy Jason, like, I, like during the middle of the game. So it, it's yeah. awesome. I don't, yeah, I don't get I'm, to see him until like after the end, but like it's awesome. Yeah, sometimes you'll get back to me around halftime. You'll yeah. shoot me some texts at halftime about yeah. something that happened with two minutes into the first quarter. But <laughs> we're always going back and forth on that, but definitely check that out. Check out the Buff State Bengals. They are a fun program to pay attention to. Speaking of football, they've changed some rules recently. It's it's This is a great time for you to have come on because they've changed some rules. And you said that you have a little bit of indifference between the kickoff rules. So personally, I don't really... I don't really care about the kickoff rule that much because the kickoffs have become a touchback every time. There hasn't really been anything going on when they changed it originally. I was more upset about the original change of the kickoff rule where they moved it up. So now it's a yeah. touchback every time yeah. rather than now where it's more XFL where the, the, I think they still start at the 35, but all the players start at the, the posing 40 or something like that. Yeah. So what's your opinion on it? So there's like the landing zone and then the blocking zone from what <laughs> I'm understanding. And, my biggest thing about this this whole this it I like it for the XFL. I I just feel like it's gimmicky. And I understand like they're trying to make the game safe, but it's like how safe can you make a a contact sport? So, I understand like years ago, they 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 dis when I was a player and even before then they they disbanded the wedge. It was a you could have a five-man wedge and that caused for a lot of injuries. Eric Legrand, a Buffalo Bills uh, player years ago, I can't remember, he paralyzed his neck because you had these things, these big fullbacks or tight ends called wedge busters, which their whole plan was not to tackle, was just to blow up the five-man wedge. So they disbarred that. They they moved the kickoff up so they could shorten. They, they stopped the run-up approach, and like, the kickoff team had to be stagnant. Now they're doing it to where you're five yards or ten yards away from each other. You, you can't you can't move until the returner has caught the ball, and it's enticing more kick returns. But then at the same time, it's like 
taking away the scheme side of things and the development side of special teams. And then you're taking away uh, the onside kick approach as well. Like you can't do any surprise onside kicks. If you want to do an onside kick, you have to announce it to, to the referee, which I'll, I don't think I don't think that happened enough to really make a difference, though. Like, yeah, it, there was the Super Bowl where it happened, but it doesn't happen enough where I think it's going to make that much of a difference. It doesn't, but then it always takes away the element of surprise when you can do it. So, like, play like players like uh, Young Way Koo uh, of Falcons. He he's highly efficient when it comes to 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 his onside kicks, um, and especially his coordinator. Like, this is all the things that I, I pay attention to. So. Like, mm-hmm. you, you have players like Pat McAfee who, who were able to do the middle onside surprise kick when when you have the opportunity. Like, when, you, when you're a special teams coordinator, you get to look at what you can take advantage of and how you can, and how you can steal a possession or two away from a good team or how you can manipulate the game or change the field position. When you completely take it away, there's no element of it where a team has to prepare for it or where you can figure out how you can steal a possession. Now the only way you can do that is on punt or field goal where you can fake a surprise or or, or anything like that. And it will only be a matter of time before they decide to change that as well. One of my favorite rules that they did uh, over the past couple of years was moving the field goal back, uh, the extra point back. I think that was one of the best rules because, yeah, it's not just a playoff anymore. You move it back to the 35, make it a 35-yard kick. Um, Now you have a lot of kickers who miss those extra points, which can change the course of the game. It may it may take and their career. Yeah, and I mean, (laughs) I mean, shoot, look at uh, what was his name, Robert Aguayo, uh, Aguayo. Couldn't make yeah. a fit, couldn't make an extra point to save his life, and then couldn't make a field goal. Yeah. <laughs> so they, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's in the he was in the XFL for quite some time. So like, I I like the innovation on some things in the in, in the NFL when it comes to the special teams, but it seems like they're slowly slowly trying to take that way the, that that part of the game out. And if that's the case, then you're just going to do offense and defense and then just put the ball at 25, which that's exactly what it was last year when, with all the touchbacks. It was yeah. o- offense, defense, put the ball to 25, there we go, start the game. Like, And it was – and like players like – I mean, you think about all the players over the course of the year who, who were special team uh, legends, uh, Devin Hester, Joshua Cribs, uh, Matthew Slater, who just retired, who who made his his living off kickoff and kick and, and punt, um, uh, Jacoby Jones, like all these big time returners. You take the whole return game out, and now it's, I mean, with this kickoff, you're you're bringing it back, but I don't think you're bringing bringing it back in the right manner. I I, I think it's. It's very gimmicky. It's not the NFL. If you wanted to leave that to the XFL, leave it to the XFL. I think the way we had kickoffs was fine. Move it back to the uh, 30-yard line. Don't move it up, and then let let the let the guys play. Like they understand it's a contact sport. Um, and that that I mean that brings me to my I, I mean brings me to my next point. I don't know if you heard about the hip drop tackle rule. That was, well, that's I was going to bring up the reason uh, they changed the kickoff is because of the hip drop uh, tackle. Like they had to try to take some some heat off themselves. That's uh, the only reason they even changed it in the first place. I'm telling uh, you right now, like, if, they did this a couple of years ago with pass interference as well. Uh, like they, there was another I can't remember what the rule change was, but there was a major rule change. It might have been the catch cha- the catch thing. Uh, like they changed the what was a catch and at the same time. Uh, they did the reviewable pass interference. Uh, the, and it's like to take heat off the other one. We we were just talking about this in the office, and, and uh, Coach Morgan he brought up a great point, right? So he said, "All right, what's what's a tackle? My job as a tackle is to bring you down. Now, what stops me from going full speed through your kneecaps? Nothing. Uh, nothing stops me going full speed at your kneecaps right now as a player. Now I don't because it's a brotherhood, and you know to it's a safe it, you." How to safely tackle somebody to the ground? A hip yeah. drop tackle. Don't do it to them. You don't want them to. Yeah, you. exactly. If I'm getting blocked and I'm getting pushed back and you run past me, my only way is to reach out and grab you and drop my center of gravity. There's 
no other way for me to bring you down to the ground. If that's the case, you want me to just tag off on the hip like it's two hand touch and let you go on by, then then let's just do that then. Let's make it the pro ball. The other point he had was if if we're gonna make a tackle if we're gonna make a rule on tackling, make a rule on catching. Make a rule that if you don't catch the ball with two hands, solid, that means any body catch, any trap catch, anything like that, it's not a complete. It's not a completion. If if you want to make a rule that, that it's making it impossible for defensive players to play defense in the NFL. It's making it nearly impossible. And, and like, yeah. um, what was uh, Antoine Hawkins, the receiver for the Browns, he, he had a great point. He was like, he made a joke. He was like, I'm on everyone's highlight tape on biggest hits. Like, his highlight tape is just him getting smoked 24-7 as a receiver. And he goes... I don't understand. Like, I understood what what the what I signed up for when they came to the NFL. I understood they put the concussion protocol in place. They did this. He said, if you want to make the game safe, how about you take out all the turf fields and put grass, natural grass fields, and then we'll have less well, lower the, body injuries. But that's that. That's the real one. That's the real talk. But nobody wants that because that ruins the product. Because then you will have muddy games and you'll have low scoring games which won't bring in the money the revenue and god forbid you do that but yep. if you have injuries you'll have marquee players go down and you'll have players out for weeks and then you'll like i don't understand where the logic is like if you talk about player safety then make all the fields natural grass or make them the grassy turf whichever one that helps the players stay healthy the longest the longest you need something that has give. Yeah. You need just something that has give beneath them. And you, you, you limit a lot of the stuff, like yeah. with the leg injuries, at least if you, and the NFL recently, I feel like out of all the leagues and, and baseball could have taken this, but I think the real changes baseball has done has been like pretty good. Like I, I've enjoyed the baseball, like the, the pitch clock and I there was, hasn't been anything that really, I was gonna ask you that. it, yeah, I like the pitch clock. I liked it when it first came out. I was not one of the haters of the pitch clock when it first came out. I actually went to a minor league baseball game. I went to a Renegades game, and they had the pitch clock before it was in the majors. Mm -hmm. And the game was over in like an hour and 45 minutes. And I was like, wow, this is this is great. Like, this is legit. We're done already. Like, we can get out of here. This is nice. And I love baseball, and I'm still mm -hmm. happy to get out of there in an hour and 45 mm -hmm. minutes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so So I was all about the pitch clock. And I feel like the NFL has had a lot of rule changes recently, and they don't, none of them come over well. And but the difference between the pitch clock in baseball and the rule changes the NFL make is people just love the NFL so much they just deal with it. No one's yeah. no one accepts it. They're not like, yeah, this is good. Like I love this rule change. They're just like, well, this is the product now. I still like the product. I still am going to care about the product, but this is it now. And I don't agree with the product. But this but is I what have I have to, to do because with. this is what I get. This yeah. is what I get. So yeah. what am I what am I gonna do? I mean, when the XFL came out, if you remember they're, they're big. It was either the XFL or the USFL. I know they're combined now, but at the time when they were both a league, their pitch was like, this is the league where you can hit people. Like yeah. you're going to see hits. Oh, because people can hit people. Well, listen, like, yeah. that was their, yeah. that was their thing. Like that's what they did. The first couple games I watched in the USFL and XFL, people were getting smoked and I was, yeah. I felt like I was back and I was, 2012, 2011, where I was just watching the Legion of Boom just hit people over and over again. Yeah. And I was all in. And I was all in. But, like, now the NFL, it's like, yeah, you're not going to see. And I was okay with the crackback rule. I thought that was a dangerous rule. I, I, I understood why they took that out for offensive guys blocking. I understood the leading with the head because that's damage to the head, neck, brain. That's I understood that. If you want to make it ta like make it very very similar to like rugby, driving your legs, like teach everyone how to rugby tackle, and then teach everybody to tackle safely. But then don't talk about hip drop tackles. Like that's if someone gets rolled yeah. up on, that's just the nature of the game. That's just what happens. And they're they're upset because the the Baltimore Ravens lost uh, Mark Andrews last year, all of last year, and then the same game. Um, Lamar Jackson got ran over, and then Patrick Mahomes. That when it happens to marquee players, everyone goes up and up. Or when it happens to a bunch of nobodies, it's reactively. Like, yeah, it's 
it is what it is. But I'm not a fan of that rule. Not a fan of the not a fan of the kickoff. But like I said, like this is the product that we're dealt with. This is this is what we're gonna have to deal with. I I'm just hoping that it never trickles down to college. But I, like especially the kickoff rule. I I hope they keep college football the way it is. I if they're gonna keep the NFL like that because of the money and revenue it generates, I understand. But just let and college football just be exactly how it is. I think it's perfectly fine. It's almost it's almost tough not to change the rule though, because now you're still teaching these kids the one way and yeah. then they're gonna get to the highest it's, league uh, and, and it's gonna be completely complete. different. Yep. So it's it's tough to see it not have at least at the D one yeah. level at least at yeah. the highest highest level I could yeah. see it changing, but you never know you never know yeah. college does want to try to be different, I mean they don't they they're trying not to be the NFL right yeah. even though it's basically that's it's, that's basically the minor leagues it's at this basically point. the minor it's, leagues it's yeah. college yeah. so which would be an interesting concept if yeah. college was this was a concept I wrote in an article years ago, okay and this is like one of the last things we're gonna do before we wrap up. Uh, I wrote an article for a website that my friend started years ago. It doesn't exist anymore, so I'm not even going to plug it. And it was every NFL team got a series of local colleges, major colleges, and that was their minor league system. So, like, you drafted a kid out of high school, and the L.A. Rams have UCLA, and they can stick them on UCLA – or they could stick them on whatever schools were in their thing. And yeah. that was their minor league system was like the three schools that were there. You had like the highest one could be UCLA. Then you can have like, I don't even know what another LA school is off the top of my head. That's pretty bad. Maybe no Berkeley's not whatever. Uh, Cal, another Berkeley, LA school there. Eagle, Cal Berkeley, yeah, Eagle, like, like three, Stanford, like, yeah, there's yeah. three California schools and that's like, it, it goes down levels. Like you don't have like USC, UCLA and Stanford all in one thing. Yeah, it's like but tier like it's, A, tier B, and tier down. C. Yeah. 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 And then like the guys that you really want, you think are going to be high, good, good players. You put on UCLA and then the other guys you put like, and you build them up into UCLA players like over the years, like maybe it's a D one, D two, D three thing. I don't know. <sighs> I, I don't, I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but I was like, if, if they did that, just think how interesting not only college football would be, but how interesting the NFL would be because they'd be developing these guys for years before even getting to the NFL and they'd be developing the way they want. Is that a good thing? Probably not. I mean, we've seen guys, I mean, look at like the Zach Wilson's of the world. Like who knows? Zach Wilson may have been a good quarterback, but he's with the jets and they never had a good quarterback. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's all about timing and situation of where you've been. Like I always think about like, how good is Pat Mahomes? If he's on a different team, I still think he's Pat Mahomes, but is he, is He's he, probably pretty good because right now his team is it was, it was a little tough on the yeah. offensive side, and he was he won the Super Bowl. The so fact that he probably, took that team to the Super Bowl team. is insane. Took uh, one, yeah, that took and won. <laughs> one. The, the fact that he took <laughs> and won the Super, Bowl. the Super Bowl with that team is insane to me. Um, you know, but like I just always think like, what if what if Zach Wilson is or what like what if. I, I'm gonna. I'm a Giants fan. What if Daniel Jones is with Andy Reid? Like, is he a better quarterback? Yeah. Is is he? Because I know Maybe right now. Bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, what if Mac Jones actually has an offensive coordinator in, for the Bats instead of yeah, and Matt not a Patricia? not a rocket scientist. Yeah, like so. It's always <laughs> a what if game. Like, are these the right fits for the right people, or are these just bad football players? Which one is it? The the funny thing with Mac Jones is I actually think it was more of it was hiring Matt Patricia to be the offensive coordinator, which made no sense. But it was also like when they did that and he started to do bad, his confidence was just so shot. He was oh, never he was because don't forget he was pretty good his rookie year. His yeah. rookie year, he looked like he was going to be a good quarterback. Yeah, we're like, oh wow, like look, he was going to be a good. In. I thought he was going to be a good system quarterback. Like he's never going to wow. He's in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, he's not going to wow you statistically wise. Of like, oh, he's gonna throw for five thousand yards, but he's gonna put you in position to win games, and like, you have a good defense, good pieces around him. Like, problems in the playoffs. Yeah, like you. But then all of a sudden, it just went. 
(laughs) Because they did the same four plays. They did like slant over the middle, run left, (laughs) run light, run middle. And he threw in a couple interceptions and he lost all his confidence. And there was nothing to get him out of that funk. There's no like dinks and dunks that can get you going again. Like, all right, now I'm starting to build some confidence, getting some, getting some receptions, building some yards, getting downfield. There was none of that. And then he just lost it. And now he's out of Jacksonville Jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> so, back up. Back up. And, and, <laughs> and, and May's probably going to be the new quarterback. And yeah. hopefully they do better with him. Him or Daniels, right? Or McDaniels, right? Da- uh, no, da- Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Daniels? Jaden Daniels. Okay. Jaden Daniels. I don't know. No. Now I don't know. I I don't remember nah. which one's right. J- now I will never know which one's it's right. It's Jaden Daniels. It's Jaden Daniels. I'm, I, would, I would be excited to have him because he would just be like, Super He's athletic a, and probably the most exciting player since Randy Moss in that way. Yeah. But I think Drake May is probably just the better product to have a quarterback. I, he's just he's 230 a, pounds and has he's, he's a very good quarterback. He's more of a finished product. You, I'm telling you, the sleeper quarterback in this draft is Joe Milton, the Texas quarterback. Not because he can throw 80 yards while just standing there, but the fact uh, – he, he's got a great physique. The Texas great, quarterback, yeah, uh, Joe Milton. Like the starting quarter, because wasn't their quarterback's name? Because um, their quarterback was going back. Because the whole thing was Arch Manning. Is he going to stay? Quinn Ewers, right? Yeah, Quinn Ewers. That was their start. Oh, sorry, Tennessee. Sorry, not not Texas. Sorry, Tennessee. Tennessee. I okay. knew okay. I knew it was, I was orange. That, I was very I confused. It, I knew it was orange. I just couldn't remember. I was about to say, dude, yeah. that is a sleeper because yeah. he wasn't even the starting quarterback yeah. in Texas. Yeah. That is a deep yeah. sleeper right yeah. there. Um, <laughs> it wasn't yeah, even yeah. the second jo- string. Yeah, Joe Milton. <laughs> I, uh, I was like, well, you know, Quinn Ewers was the Texas quarterback. But, yeah, no, Joe Milton, I think, is the sleeper yeah, yeah, quarterback yeah. of the draft. Um, That'd be I, cool. Uh, I, I would love to be able to play this back in in a couple in like a year. Yeah, and see, and like see if I was he's right. The new CJ Stroud. You know what's so funny? But, I every time uh, face. I know you're gonna wrap this up, but like, every time Facebook memories comes up around draft time, I go back and like look at all my like. If the Giants don't draft this person, if the Giants don't draft this person, and like sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm really really yeah. wrong, and I look back, I'm like. Well, I'm glad I'm not the GM because I really would have fucked this draft up right here. Like, I think <laughs> at one point I, I, I wanted um, uh, who was the um, I, I had said the Giants better draft Darius Hayward Bay, and I wanted him so bad out of college because of like the four 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 one speed or whatever. And I was like, man, the yeah, Giants how fast are, he was. and I'm like, yo, the Giants need this speed. And I'm pretty sure he lasted like two years in the league and was out like the yeah, next he one. Was, <laughs> was he, he was probably a Raider, first of all, because he was yeah. fast yeah. and can't catch. <laughs> and uh yeah, he lasted like two years and that was the end of that. I I had a one time when I was cleaning out a bunch of old stuff, I found this old article that I wrote for the school paper when I was in Gainesville, Florida or something like maybe maybe in New Haven. It was something like that. And um, it was after that. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. It was the year Mookie Betts won MVP because I have this sheet and I, I call the AL and NL MVP and almost had the stats almost exactly right. I called the NL Cy Young. I called the both rookie of the years. It was crazy. I'll have to find it again so I could post this. But I called like almost every award before the season, and I had the stats pretty damn close. Pretty accurate. I used to be really good at this stuff. I was used to be. I used to be really good at this stuff. Now yeah. I went in my fantasy draft. I'm like, who who are these people? See, what who you, are these what, people? What you wish you had at that time was FanDuel because then you would have just made a, a long parlay. Back. I'm gonna have it now. Yeah, in, in advance and just like let it ride. <laughs> just let it sit. I don't even have it now. I, yeah. I don't even have FanDuel now. I wish I did because I really wish I did this. And I, I should. I think I was an indie when the season started for the NBA. I definitely was because I went to the indie uh, Pacers opener. I was thinking of downloading uh, FanDuel and putting an over on the Orlando Magic win total because it was 36 and a half. And I was like, this team is winning 40 plus games. What are like, they at they're, now? They're going to be really good this year. Are they at 50 they're, games? They're... They're all, they're almost. I don't know if they're gonna get it. They're like closing in on the three seed. That's all. Yeah, the they east. gotta be. They gotta be fifty wins though. They gotta. Yeah, be 50 they're closing wins. in on the three seed on the east. It's yeah. it's pretty crazy how how good. The, I mean, I knew that team was gonna be good. Like I knew right. that team was gonna have a good year. 
And uh, I'm very happy that they are. If you don't listen to the Six Man Show podcast, go listen to that now because they are they are great at what they do, and they've been covering this really well. As someone that doesn't get to watch every game, and someone that like I don't get to watch every game, I don't get to follow everything going on, and I get a lot of my updates through the Six Man Show from their posting and their and their podcast, the post game shows, all that stuff. So go follow the Six Man Show. Shout out to Jonathan and Luke. Are you looking up their stats right now? Are there thing right now? Yeah, I was. I was very really curious. Um, the Where Magic are, are forty two and thirty, while the Knicks are forty four and twenty eight. It's just a good day to see, yeah. like, see both of our teams who used to struggle day in and day out, like in the playoff run. Yeah, and they're and they're in the playoff run. Uh, well, they they both locked it up. They're in the yeah. playoffs. Yeah. If Orlando's in the playoffs, they they are not in the play in. They have locked a playoff yeah. seed up, which is it, like. So I, dope. You know what I want is actually I want you guys to actually lose a couple games and drop down to the six seed. That means the Knicks will have to play the Magic, and then we can really have a uh, that would be fun a discussion there. You know what I mean? That would be fun. Depending on depending on if the Knicks come back healthy, and then it'd be fun because the they played the Knicks now. I think I think they're three and one against the Knicks. Orlando mm-hmm. are and. The three games they played, the one loss I think it was the beginning of the season, or was either recent. No, it was recent. They held them to like eighty points. Yeah, yeah. the Knicks. The Knicks uh, held the Orlando like eighty points, but like none of the games have the Knicks. The Knicks have but, been completely healthy. Yeah. I don't think they've seen OG once. Yeah, uh, well, OG's been out for a while, and then Josh Hart, like three games in a row, he played like forty eight minutes. He played. He didn't and get is Julius Randle even back. Uh, is Julius sh- Randle even back? I'm not I don't think sure. he's back either. I don't think so either. I don't think he's um, back either. So maybe if they're like, healthy, uh, healthy, it'll be fun. Harnstein just came back. I know that. So Harnstein, yeah. Harnstein, they're, and they're, then I know Mitchell Robinson was questionable last week, uh, last week or last night. Always I questionable. I know. So, like, when, but off air, off air, we were talking about 2K. Oh, I was yeah. telling you how they keep trading my guy. And I just wanted you to know that I was traded for Mitchell Robinson after my MVP championship winning year where I averaged 67 points, 14 assists, 10 rebounds. And I got traded for Mitchell Robinson. Sol- solid trade piece. <laughs> solid trade piece. Solid trade piece. <laughs> so, no draft picks involved. It was a straight up <laughs> my 67 point per game guy for Mitchell Robinson, who then they traded to the Nets. So he didn't even stick with the Jazz, which team I was on. Hey, at and least he didn't have to move. If you really think about it, he didn't have true, to move. True. Like, or did he? I don't know how long he was on Utah. Yeah, Maybe he had yeah. to move to Utah for three months. And they're like, yeah, you know what? Just kidding. You're going back to New York. You're going back to New York. All right. So to help, to help close out this, the one thing I wanted to talk about that we started this whole thing about, we started basketball. Yeah, you, were, we you wanted to football. bring it up in the beginning, but and then when, we, we went all over the place. Yeah. So being from Gonzaga, I know Jalen Suggs is your guy. I know Chet Holmgren's your yeah. guy. Does yep. Chet Holmgren, he played 82 games. He start, well, he, he's on pace to play 82 games, start 82 games, completely healthy. Does he deserve to win Rookie of the Year over Victor Wembanyama? Oh, or, 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 or no, does no, he Victor not Wembenyana's deserve it? Win. He, he, he is going to win you were it. Asking me this, does he? If you were asking me this three months ago, I would have said Chet's going to win Rookie of the Year. But, dude, Victor Wembanyama, in since like January, is averaging like five and a half blocks. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's he's insane. averaging like twenty points, five and a half blocks, fifteen. No, Victor Embanyama is going to win, yeah. and he should win. Um, I love Chet, and I think he's great for Oklahoma City. This is just a basketball segment now. This is yeah. great. I think Chet's great for Oklahoma City. I think they were very dumb for not going to get a, another center. They need a beefy guy there that can come in when when they first guys that they're going to need. They they're going to need a guy that could play down low against the few. Buff centers yeah. that Chet's going to get bullied by. Chet, Victor Wimbanyana, all those guys get bullied by these guys. Yeah. They need a big guy like that. And they went out and they got Gordon Hayward instead of getting a guy that can do that. I don't, they got Gordon Hayward because of the expiring contract and they can get somebody in the offseason, all that stuff. They're, they should be winning now. They're like, uh, they can still potentially be the one seed in the West. Like, uh, not going out and getting a center was a really dumb move. They could have moved him up one. Put a bigger guy on like the the Jokic of the world, or, or the just right, or, or off the bench, coming off the bench, or off you, the bench to, to give you some time. I, it's tough to have Chet coming off the bench. He he probably no, no, start no, at no, center. No, honestly, no, no, not then. Chet, but have, oh, like, the bigger yeah, guy, the bigger yeah, the bigger guy. guy yeah, 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 off yeah the that's bench, yeah. 
Yeah, like in a series, he'd start coming off the bench, and then if you really need him to, you put him at center to go against yeah. whoever. Well, whoever center is yeah, whoever you need. Especially because beefy centers are kind of coming back. Like yeah. the big center is kind of making a comeback a little bit. Like it, it was, it was lengthy for a couple of years there, but now it's now it's kind of coming. Like they're still there. Like Victor Wembanyama's obviously so, still there. Gonna but. have to pause you on that one. That was that was pretty bad. Lengthy. That was pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, no, absolutely. Like, hey, like man. Uh, you got <laughs> you got like uh you got like Joe, you got Joker, you have Joel Embiid, guys who like really like can can. Take take you out on the three point line and then ISO you down low to where they can just back you down underneath the post and just and then make a finish and move to the basket. But like Chet, There's Chet, even, like you said, like, like Chet guys. and Victor, like they they're not going to be able to hang for forty minutes a game versus those guys. But the the thing with them is they get bullied and they they're always going to be on dunk tapes, right? They're always going to be on dunk tapes. It is what it is. They're just not that big. But if you watch these guys actually play night in and night out. As many times as they're on dunk tapes, they're oh, also they're physical. blocking the yeah, absolute yeah, hell yeah, yeah. out of these guys. Like they they have good time. I told yeah. you this when the NBA draft was coming. The w- craziest th- when I was watching Chet because I got to the one thing that I'm grateful for in, my, uh, for in my life is I got to watch Chet like literally up close. Yeah, like, I was at those games on the baseline with a camera. And the craziest thing about Chet was he was so good timing wise with blocks. Like, yeah, yeah, he's tall and he's lanky and he can, but he was just so good timing wise. He was able to block so many different shots. And he's, and that's why he's, he's more, ath- the hole. he's like really athletic for how big he is. Like, so yeah. he's able to cover ground, cover from one block to a mid range shot to a floater to like, he's, he's got a great, like you said, a great instinct f- around the rim. Uh, him and Victor, yeah. and it also helps with being, you know, the long, lanky type to to able to cover that ground. Um, yeah, yeah, and and so actually, uh, I thought this question was gonna be different. Uh, I thought you were gonna ask, do I think that Orlando should have went, should have gone with Chet instead of Ben Caro? And I was gonna say, absolutely not. Paulo Ben. No, no, I, th- I, th- I think Ben Caro stud, fits stud. exactly. Yeah, I think Ben Caro fit. Ben Caro is a better version of what to, I thought Tobias Harris was going to be for the, for the magic. That's, I, that's, 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 that's hurtful to right. compare Ben Carroll to Tobias. No, Harris. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm they, saying like Tobias Harris is a discount Ben Carroll, not Ben Carroll is a discount. Yeah, no, 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 I know. I'm, but a lot of people <sighs> compare him saying like his ceiling's probably Jason Tatum. You're like, I thought he would be a better Tobias Harris. Like, 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 no, like, oh, I, I didn't. Tobias Harris, no, but like, that guy. Like, thinking Big Carroll, like, coming out of Duke, like, I was worried about the 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 sweat uh, problem he was having, like, losing, like, 10 pounds a game. Didn't think he was yeah. going to last. So I thought, you know, he'd probably be a uh, 25 to 30 minute type player, you know, functional. Good, good rebounder, good post scorer, good mid range specialist, and he's just turned into an all around player who does everything. Yeah, he's a dog, and he's a dog. That's guy. like he's an absolute. But dog. like when Tobias Harris was on the Magic for you guys, I thought Tobias Harris was going to be that as well. I thought I, there was no issues yeah. with Tobias Harris coming out of college, so I thought Tobias Harris was going to be your everything small forward, power forward guy that can do. Back to the basket. Technically, mid-range. he was. He was, but he just like he <laughs> technically just wasn't good at it. But he technically good. was. So that's where I'm getting at. Like my Tobias <laughs> Harris, he's a lot better. So yeah. like, yeah, I you he's your Tatum. I just don't. Does he do a lot of the the point forward stuff like Tatum does, or um, or not really? Is not it really, really like so? Sucks? So. The big, the big thing. Well, Suggs doesn't do the point of this. Cole Anthony and and Markel Fultz, okay. and but the big problem with Ben Caro that people were worried about was like, will he be able to score in the NBA? Like, because he was a very much post centric or yeah. basket centric guy, I should say, not really post centric, but like a basket centric guy. But he creates his shots and he gets to the basket, like mm-hmm. elite, elite skills in getting getting by people he, he's just so good he's fun to watch and i've got i got to see him a couple times up close in in the i saw him dunk on um whatever jalen smith or whatever for indy it was beautiful to watch that he's just uh he's a fun player to watch 
I love Paolo Bencaro. I also love Chet Holmgren. And I like Victor Wembanyama as well. I kind of fallen into that baseball when I was younger. Like I liked a lot of players and yeah. didn't dislike anybody. I don't really dislike any NBA players. Yeah, there's really no NBA players that like that like kind of piss me off. Like everyone's no. There's some that make dumb decisions, but I don't sit there like I hate this guy. Yeah, like I but... I'll watch every like Steph Curry. I'll watch all the time. Like even though he's like he's got to be 33, 34 now. Like. Uh, he might wow. be older than that, even. Yeah, he might be 35, 36 ish. He's electric to watch. So, like, there's. Every... He's fun to watch. Yeah. So, but yeah. We got a little bit of everything in today. That's yeah. great. We got a little bit of everything in. I just wanted to say, uh, good run by my Zags. They're not in the tournament anymore by the time everybody's listening to this. So, good run by my Zags. Because we were talking about the Zags. I wanted to bring uh, that up to. to oh, they play. lost? Good run by them. Sweet 16. They are going to lose um to purdue so good luck to the rest of the teams i hope you all lose and nobody wins this year. <laughs> but chandler thank you so much for coming on we really appreciate you being here man really appreciate you having me man this is awesome i, I love what you do man uh like i said i'm a big, big supporter of you and everything mad props sketching up working for marketing companies everything so um keep it up keep up the hard work and and uh can't wait to be on the next episode. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, Chandler, for joining us. Thank you guys all for being here for another great episode of Mad Props. Remember, you can follow Chandler on social media. We'll put all the links below so you can find that. And you can find them on all different platforms. And you can follow Buff State. We'll put Buff State down there as well. So you can follow them in, on all different platforms and see what they're up to if you want to see what his team's going on with. Or if you're a football player that's interested in going to Buff State, you can see what's going on with them um, as well. Thank you guys all for being here for another episode of Mad Props. Remember to follow us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and TikTok. We are trying to push the TikTok a little bit more. We kind of stopped. So the people that are following are like, what the heck? You're not doing anything. Why would I follow this? Well, we're going to start moving it again. So definitely go check out all of our stuff. Check out, check out the YouTube. Go subscribe to our YouTube. Um, I'm thinking of doing some more fun stuff on there, like maybe some live things on there, but we'll have to see not right, not right away, but maybe in the near future. So if you want to see what we're going to go on there, um, definitely go check out our YouTube at Schnabel Studios um, and subscribe to that. Make sure you hit the bell and you get every episode of every podcast or any video that comes out, you'll get right away. So do that for us pretty please. Thank you guys again for being here. We really appreciate you being here. I'm not going to keep you too long here at the end. Just make sure you go follow us and go ahead and comment, subscribe, like, uh, uh, share, give us five stars, whatever. Tell us how the podcast is. Honestly, all I really care about is you telling us how the podcast was. All I really want to know is, did you enjoy this? Was this good for you? Where can we improve? That's really all I want to know. So if you just want to do that, that's fine. If you want to do the rest of this stuff, that helps us out too. But just tell us how we did because we are here for you. This is why we're doing this to, to so for your listening pleasure. So do that. I've been Chris Well, Thank you guys so much, Chandler. Thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate you being here. This has been Mad Props. We'll see you next week. See you later. Go vote for the throwback. I don't know if it'll be the next episode, but go vote for the throwback. It's going to be this week on Twitter, probably Instagram, and maybe Facebook. Go do it. Later.